everybody. I'm Dan Clark, TV critic for Dial Digest. And I'm Kevin Rush, television critic for your TV Weekly Log. And we are on the television. Tonight we'll review This Old Backyard, the new companion piece to the Fix It Yourself show, This Old House. And we'll tell you what we think of a new show featuring stand-up comedians in a Wild West setting. It's called Comedy Corral. We'll also have a look at some more of the alleged Rob Lowe sex tapes that are coming in from all over the country. And a new show starring pets called Man's Best Friends. But first up, tobacco. For years, ever since their commercials were banned, the cigarette industry has been trying to get their product back onto TV. And into America's lungs. Well, they've done it with tobacco, a sprawling nighttime soap opera in the style of Dallas and Falcon Crest. People sure do smoke on this show, and smoke and smoke. Here are a few of the more memorable scenes from an episode of Tobacco. Now you listen to me, Pex. And you listen to me good. I forbid you to marry Connie Granger. Why, Mother? I'd rather switch to a low-tar cigarette than to see my only son marry into that non-smoking family. But I love her, Mother. Besides, Connie smokes. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. She doesn't even inhale. Now you listen to me, Mother. You may have everyone else in this town jumping through smoke rings. They may light up when you say light up. They may inhale when you say inhale. And puff when you say puff. But I run my own life. And I'm going to marry Connie Granger. I'll see you dead first. The story follows the ill-fated love affair between Connie and Pex. I need you. I need a cigarette. Unfiltered, Pex. Mmm, two. That sounds good. never loved you more. Mother will be so happy. And in one of the highest rated shows of the season, Connie's father, Sam Granger, the only non-smoker in the cast, dies, leaving Maggie to wonder why. Why? 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 Why, Doctor? Why? He was a non-smoker. The fibers in his lungs were completely uncoated with the safety layer of tar. Like charging into a rainstorm without your galoshes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's not much time left. <gasps> in fact, there's no time. Excuse me, I was just building up that protective layer of tar in my lungs. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, as a non-smoker, this show really, really offends me. I've never been one for those glitzy nighttime soaps anyway, but this one's nothing more than an hour-long commercial for cigarettes. I mean, what's next? A soap called Liquor? Don't give them ideas, Dan. But I do agree with you. I stopped watching the nighttime soaps when Diane Carroll joined the cast of Dynasty. And as you said, this is nothing more than a big, gigantic cigarette ad 
And since I already smoke big, gigantic cigarettes on a very regular basis, I don't think I'll be watching tobacco again. We'll be back with Man's Best Friends, Comedy Corral, a look at some of the alleged Rob Lowe sex tapes, and this old backyard, right after these messages. From the people who bring you TV you can trust, with the expert help of the writers of I Love Lucy, comes Nick at Night's first original sitcom, The Early Days. A brand new comedy about something we all hold dear, TV. TV when it was young and live. It's a damn TV in The Early Days. It's a Nick at Night world premiere, The Early Days, Wednesday at 9, 8 central on Nick at Night. Did you know Tic Tacs are made with sugar? On the other hand, Certs Mini Mints are sugar-free. Sugar-free Certs Mini Mints. Looks like we've blown away the competition. UFOs land in Montana. It comes with one hand and eats tech with the other. Is there anything to eat? I can't keep my hand out of this bag. It's so good. And you thought Chex Mix was just for parties. Chex Mix, what are you saving it for? On some Atari Lynx games, you can link up four players. But there's only ever one winner. Atari Lynx, the portable video arcade. Atari Lynx has an option switch. So you can play at twice the speed. Atari Lynx, the portable video arcade. As a physician, it really does break my heart to see so many women of all ages who know so little about contraception. Some women can't believe that an effective contraceptive can be available without prescription. One of the most important advantages of the Today Sponge is its accessibility and its convenience. It's certainly the most thoroughly tested over-the-counter female contraceptive in the United States today. Today's Sponge is an excellent choice for many women. Many people have thanked me for recommending Today's Sponge. What's this? Huh? Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing? No. Uh, okay, it's a game, a Jenga. But uh, how do you please play? Please don't get started. You take a piece off the bottom, you put it on the top. But don't, don't. Eat, talk, circulate. Don't play the game. Come on, oh. Charlie, you got the fastest hands in the room. Yes. Yes. Food! Oh, oh, right. Right. Oh, Limbo oh, contest! Oh, that's the best move I've seen you make all night, Helen. Alan, the game not Jenga again! Alan! Alan! I wasn't playing. I swear. Jenga, once you touch it, you can't keep your hands off it. There aren't many shows on TV nowadays you can watch with your whole family. That's why I've decided not to have one. Well, this next show may change your mind. It's called Man's Best Friends, and it centers on a story of a young boy named Jimmy. It has a lot of the same qualities that made Lassie such a big hit in the 50s. In this first clip, Jimmy and his pet Torty are hiking in the woods together when tragedy strikes. We better hurry up and get home, Torty. It's getting dark, and we're going to be late for dinner. <laughs> I wonder where Jimmy could be. It's getting late, Walter. Oh, now don't worry, Donna. I'm sure Jimmy's fine. He's probably out just horsing around with Torty, that's all. I suppose you're right. I'm just being silly. Oh, here's Torty now. Oh. Yes, but where's Jimmy? I think Torty's trying to tell us something. What is it, Torty? Jimmy's in trouble? He sprained his ankle in the woods by the old oak tree and sent you to get us to help him? Good turtle. Come on, Torty. We'll follow you. Thanks to Torty, Jimmy is rescued, and later that night, while his parents are out at a church meeting, Jimmy is terrorized by a burglar. Oh, well, Hammy, I guess it's time to hit the hay. Do as I say. 
say. Now get on your feet. But I can't get on my feet, sir. Just ask Torty. I sprained my ankle and the doctor oh, says... I sprained my ankle and the doctor says... Get up, I said, or I'm gonna shoot you right now. Okay, mister. Come on, kid. I haven't got all day. Okay. You asked for it, mister. Get him, Hammy. <laughs> Jimmy's parents soon returned from their church meeting and turned the burglar over to the authorities. In the wee hours of the morning, however, more danger lurks for Jimmy. What is it, Goldie? What's the matter, girl? Huh? You're right. I do smell smoke. The house must be on fire. We better get out of here pronto. Jimmy, thank goodness you're all right. Don't thank goodness. Thank Goldie. Goldie! I don't know. This show is something that the whole family could watch together, but so is snow. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't recommend this show to anybody over eight years old. Well, I think I liked it a bit more than you did, Kevin. Now, its primary audience may be kids, but... I got a little teary-eyed there when they thought the goldfish was boiling in the bedroom. Man's Best Friends is a show I would watch again. But didn't you think that kid in the lead was just a little bit miscast? I mean, he was so big. <laughs> no, I thought it was just the parents that were so small. <clears throat> Unless you spent the last year living under a rock or you're abstaining from watching Entertainment Tonight to promote world peace, you've heard about the Rob Lowe videotapes. Abstaining from watching entertainment tonight to promote world peace? Talk about an idea whose time has come. Anywho, these tapes allegedly show Rob Lowe having you-know-what with people, and they've been coming in from all over the country. <laughs> well, we got a hold of some of these alleged sex tapes, and since they're airing on TV news shows, talk shows, infotainment shows, and the like, we thought we'd share our opinions on them with you. And this has nothing to do with the fact that it is Sweeps Week. Oh, of course not. Absolutely nothing at all to do with that. Let's look at a tape that came in from Carol Ann Horsum of New Jersey. Oh, Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe. Oh, my head is spinning. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, yeah. Oh, you movie star, you. And this one from a Mrs. Grace Borak from Miami, Florida. Oh, you have your nerve picking me up at that disco, Mr. Rob Lowe, big sexy movie star. What, a big famous movie star like myself, Rob Lowe, can't have a little fun with a chick whenever the hell he wants to? You know, it is a very bad thing you're doing, and it might be worth a lot of money for me to keep my mouth shut, Mr. Rob Lowe, big sexy movie oh. star. Look, I'll give you a million dollars if you let me make some love to you in this bed. All right. <laughs> I hope the video camera heard you say that, Mr. Rob Lowe, that you will give me, Miss Grace Borat of Miami, Florida, one million dollars. All right, come and get it. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, 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 baby. Yeah, oh, baby. Oh, oh. These things are so obviously bogus, they're funny. <laughs> and even if they weren't, they don't belong on TV. But I will say this. I think the whole sex tape thing is the best thing that's ever happened to Rob Lowe. Well, next to the Academy Awards. <laughs> but, you know, I agree with you. It's given him kind of a dark edge. It's made him a lot more interesting. Now he's got kind of a Sal Mineo thing going for him. <clears throat> okay. On to our next show. You know, westerns weren't very popular on TV for years, but now they're back. And any time you watch late night TV, you see shows featuring stand-up comics. So it makes perfect sense, at least TV sense, to put the two together and come up with our next show, Comedy Corral. This is the show that asks the question, what would it have been like to be a stand-up comedian in the Old West? Let's see if it answers it. <laughs> Where are you from? Where are you from? Dodge. Dodge? Oh, I spent a month there one weekend. <laughs> Dodge, Dodge, be a great name for an automobile. <laughs> Those things have been invented, yeah. Dodge, Dodge, hey, hey, Dodge, them bullets, Luke. <laughs> Dodge, Dodge, anyone for a game of dodgeball? Or... Dodge. What are you doing, Dodge? A blacksmith. A blacksmith? Oh, I would have taken you more for a whitesmith. <laughs> a 
I'm a blacksmith. And this is my son. He's a black jack. <laughs> and this is my black llama fur. It's my pretty. <laughs> and I'm, t I'm telling you, it was. I knew. I knew when I woke up this morning that today was going to be a bad day. I knew it. I uh, woke up and all the sheets on my bunk are completely torn up. You know, it's like, it's like, when am I going to remember to take my spurs up before I go to bed? You know, is it? What is it? What you know? What am I missing? What you know? And I, I'll tell you another thing. I'll tell you another thing. Today, I, it took me all day to get down here to the saloon. You know, it's like, don't you hate people that drive their buggies down the middle of the road? You know, give me a little. Am I being too sensitive about you know? I, and my mother. Oh God, my mother. My mother. She's like, she's like driving me crazy. You know, she's always, she's, always, she's like this, she's like this retired cowgirl, right? You know, and she's, uh, she's always after me to get married. You know, and I'm just, you know, she's always all the time bugging me about this, and I, and I try to explain to her. I try to say, you know, the only girls that are in the old west are like school moms and barmaids. You know, and I try to tell her, but she doesn't. Do it. <laughs> Did you read the newspaper this morning? Looks like there was another big covered wagon massacre outskirts of town again. <laughs> I thought I heard something in the middle of the night. I thought I heard somebody uh, just faintly off in the distance going, uh, Don't scout me! <laughs> I mean, I guess the Indians did it, but, uh, you know, I got a feeling that those people got to take some sort of responsibility for it themselves. I mean, <laughs> I mean, after all, they're living in, uh, covered wagons! Why do they get houses? <laughs> well, you know, the Indians, or should I say, uh, Native Americans, you know, they say they don't get any respect. I don't know. It's kind of hard for me. I don't know about you. It's kind of hard for me to respect a guy who's wearing a line cloak! I mean, why don't these people get some clothing? <laughs> I just crack up. I mean, I look at the guys, and, and they're standing there, and they're wearing big tails! Now, this show has a good gimmick going for it. I like stand-up comedy shows anyway, and this one kind of stands apart from the crowd, so I'm gonna have to say I liked it. Well, as Bennett Cerf used to say, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to disqualify myself on this one, Dan. I'm biased. I hate stand-up comedians. When I watch a comedian, all I can think of is, geez, what kind of a crummy childhood did this guy have that he's got to get up in front of millions of people and parade his neuroses around? I don't mind the Old West setting in Comedy Corral, but unfortunately, I do mind the comedians. We'll check in on this old backyard right after this beautiful visit with our sponsors. Some free legal advice from Mr. Ed. This is America. You can't make a horse testify against himself. For more Ed-defying information, watch Mr. Ed weeknights. Does your sinus medicine put you to sleep? You need Sudafed Sinus with a non-aspirin pain reliever for sinus headaches plus a decongestant for pressure that starts to work in as quick as 22 minutes without drowsiness. Sudafed Sinus. Fast relief, not fast asleep. The Fisher-Price Activity Walker shows kids how much fun it is to spin, dial, count, and eventually stand on their own two feet. We've road tested the Fisher-Price Pick Up and Go with the world's most inexperienced drivers. No other truck in history picks up like the Pick Up and Go from Fisher-Price. Silver Seafood and Holiday Crystal Stemware. Just 99 cents each with any meal. Long John Silvers. Make it a splash. Right now, with every kid's meal, get a Hostess Ho-Ho snack cake. 
You're being introduced now. You ready? No, my lips are dry. They feel awful. I need help fast. Here, use Blistex ointment. It works fast. Isn't medicated Blistex for cold sores? Blistex also relieves dry lips fast. Only Blistex contains moisture. Petroleum jelly doesn't. Lip balms don't. Blistex moisture speeds fast relief to dry lips. Blistex relieves dry lips fast. I like Nick at Night shows. I like their spirit. I guess what I'm trying to say is that for Adam West, Nick at Night is big TV pleasure. For several years now, New England contractor Bob Bila has shown us the ins and outs to home remodeling and rebuilding on his PBS program, This Old House. And because of the show's success, he's taken the concept one step further, one step out the back door to bring us his new show, This Old Backyard. Here, Bob and his crew give us tips and ideas on how to do things correctly and safely. So, how's it going, Luke? Well, pretty good, Bob. I'm spreading the seed here out on the dirt, uh -huh. which is where the grass will eventually grow. And if you watch my hand carefully, you notice that I'm throwing the seed away from my body, like that. See? Now, if you were to take the seed and throw it towards your body, like this, why, a lot of the seed would get caught up in your clothing and never actually reach the ground. And so that seed wouldn't grow. That's right, Bob. Uh. As a matter of fact, the seed could be carried by your clothing to some place where you don't want it to grow, like, say, a flower bed or maybe even your living room carpet. Yeah. Now, Luke, what, tell me about this. What's this over here? Ah, well, that, Bob, is your patio. Now, you want to keep the seed off of that because it won't grow there. So it's just not economically sound. Good tip. Tom, looks like you're ready to fill the sandbox. Uh, that's right, Bob. But first, let me point out a couple of things. Now, in order to get the sand out of this bag, well, this bag's gonna have to be opened. And I do it the ripping motion. I just take it back here and just like that. Now I can take the sand and pour it on the inside side of the sandbox. Now, Tom, isn't glass made out of sand? Oh, yes, it is, Bob. But see, sand itself isn't sharp and poses no threat unless it's heated to several thousand degrees. Well, we won't have to worry about that. Luke's planting a shade tree right over there. Ah, good. Luke, you're planting a tree. That's right, Bob. Now, this tree is small now, but it's going to grow. And that, of course, will make it bigger. Uh -huh. Now, it's important to know that the base of the tree here goes into the ground here. Because if it doesn't, why, it could tip over when small children are climbing it. Well, we wouldn't want that to happen. So that's why you're digging the hole. Yeah. Now, how are you going about that? Well, Bob, if you'll notice, this hole here presently has too much dirt in it. So what we're going to be doing is taking some of that dirt out of the hole. And that's called digging. Now, I'm a fan of this old house, so I immediately liked this old backyard. Now, some of the information is a little basic, like that sandbox thing. I think most people could figure that out for themselves. But I like the show. What can I say? I'm a do-it-yourself kind of guy. Well, I'm more of a have-somebody-do-it-for-you kind of a guy. <laughs> and while this show is boring enough to be informative, it doesn't help me much. I live in an apartment. Maybe if they did a show called This Old Balcony, I'd be a little bit more interested. Now let's recap Dan's and my reviews for this week's shows. We both said, don't watch tobacco. I don't need to see an hour-long cigarette ad, and it just plain made Dan sick. We disagreed on man's best friends. I say watch, and Kevin says, don't watch. Unless you're under eight years old. Kevin says, don't watch Comedy Corral. Not liking stand-up comedy in general, I found the Western setting refreshing, and I say watch. Dan liked this old backyard more than I did, but we both recommend it if you have a backyard. Well, that's on the television this week. Next time, we'll take a look at that wacky new comedy starring Isabel Sanford called If You Don't Like It, You Can Kiss My Big Butt. <laughs> we'll also look at an all-new Rob Gotham City without Batman's help and without a sense of humor. And that new morning talk show, Regis and Peggy Lee. <laughs> and a tearjerker of a movie called Daddy, Please Don't Make Me Marry That Man. Till then, I'm Kevin Rush. And I'm Dan Clark. And we'll see you next time 
on the television.